Bernie Gibson. Now you've, now you've won two Bernie Gibson. I think we've got to go back years to Freddie won the ever won two Bernie Gibson in a row. Uh, I think it's back about as far as 1924, 1926, I think. How much money would you have would you have won as a professional runner now taking up two Bernie Gibson? Is that a hard one? Um, around about 700 pounds, 700 pounds. Yes. Now what are your plans uh, in this running season now? You're taking out uh, two, two Bernie Gifts. Are you going to continue running or do you feel it's going to be penalised no. too much? Oh, well, I know I'll be penalised. I don't think I'll have much hope, but uh, I will just, I'll just keep on running, hoping that I'll pick up a place here and more sort of thing at this short time. Are you going to concentrate more on the 440 now, Ian? No, no, I've had enough of running 440s for a while now. They're a little bit too hard. Ian, okay? yeah, I understand you're going overseas. That's right, I'm leaving in the Puerto Rico. Well, we'd like to wish you all the best and congratulations on winning the 1954 Bernie Gibbs. Thanks very much. Good. Away, Igney got away well, so did Hager, then back to McDowell, followed in by Westcombe, and here's French in the white jacket coming down the outside and door. It's Eagling just in front, Hager's going to him quickly in French. It's Eagling and Hager, Eagling just in front, I think Eagling's going, and French, oh, very close, very close. French dived over the last two metres. It's between Noel Eagling and Gary French. I don't know, I couldn't possibly pick it. Eagling in front, one stride from home. Hager was also there, but I think Eagling may have beaten Hager. And then back to uh, Gary French, it's extremely close. They've all gone to congratulate Hager, but to, to me, I thought it was either Eagling, Hager, or, or Gary French in the Bernie Gift. A tremendous finish, a three-way photo in the Bernie Gift. And Gary French, I thought, may have just got up, but uh, I just don't know, it's extremely close. Uh, uh, from Victoria running in the white jacket of four meters Neil King from Victoria running in the blue jacket six and three quarter meters a very strong favorite Jay Van Steppen from Victoria in the yellow of six and three quarter meters the local favorite the local boy Mike Geary in the green of eight and a quarter meters and the outmarker is G Spinks in the pink of nine and three quarter meters three thousand dollars hanging at the end of this uh, 120 meter event The Bernie Gift. Set. Away, Spinks away well, so did Geary. Then we go back to King going hard from Van Staten and the two back markers in Proud Luck and uh, Silver are coming hard. Neil King, the favourite, those taking the lead. He was most impressive in the heat and he's going through to take out the final equally impressively. One of the easiest wins that we've seen in a Bernie Gift final for many, many years. And you can see the exultant, the uh, very, very pleased Neil King from Victoria who won his heat semi-final most impressively and now in just over a matter of about 12 seconds he's taken out well over $4,000 in cash. $3,000 first prize money and also there's over $2,000 in the Calcutta and I don't think you would see an easier victory than that than Neil King who competed in the final here about three years ago came back this year and he won that most impressively. The local boy Mike Geary may have been third, uh, may have been second and it's very very close for third. The back markers Silver and Proud Luck uh, finished on very strongly but there you can see an exultant a very, very excited Neil King just behind the starters barrier there. But there's no doubt that Neil King from Victoria, running in the blue jacket of six and three quarter metres, has taken out the Bernie, the, the uh, Isanda Bernie gift for 1981. And there's Bernie winner Neil King receiving the congratulations about to be presented with the trophy for winning this magnificent gift for 1981. The winner was Neil King from Victoria of six and three quarter metres running in the blue jacket. Second placing to Mike Geary from Burnie running in the green jacket of eight and a quarter metres and third placing another gallant performance from Steve Proudluck 
uh, from Victoria, running in the white jacket of four metres, and King's time, very smart, the fastest of the day so far, 12 seconds flat. Receiving their instructions from starter, Mr. Grenville Bell Chambers for the final of the uh, Isanda Bernie Gift for 1982. The backmarker in the red jacket, running off four and a quarter metres from New South Wales, Steve Brosman. The local runner from Burry, Bernie, Michael Geary, the winner of this year or uh, last year's Bernie Gift, running in white off seven and a quarter metres. David Keane in blue off nine metres. Wayne Johncock from Launceston off nine, running in the yellow jacket. B. Yaxley in the green off nine and a half metres. And Stephen Arnold in the pink jacket off nine and three quarter metres. There are the six runners who have won their way through from the heats, semi finals, and out of the final of the 1982 Bernie Gift. Set. Away, a great start. Arnold got away well. So did Yaxley. John Cox going hard very early, followed in by Keane. Down the outside comes Geary and Brosman. It's John Cox just in front. Geary going home the stronger though. And Michael Geary from Bernie's Jones going to take it out. The oh, he won it easily. Michael Geary first. A very popular victory. The hometown boy, Michael Geary, has fulfilled a lifetime ambition by winning the Bernie gift of 1982. It would have been Geary first. On the far side, Arnold in the pink would have been second, and very close, maybe the back marker, Stephen Brosman from New South Wales, running off the four and a quarter metre mark in the red jacket, a very, very gallant third, but there's no doubt that Mike Geary, the winner of last year's or last Tuesday night's uh, Devonport gift, also the winner of the Ovaltine sprint, has come through and taken out the Bernie gift of 1982. Berwick, a very strong favourite, but Perry, the backmarker, can't be disregarded. He's a stall gift winner, and he's been most impressive in his heat and semi-finals. Set. Away. Billy's got away well. So too is Arnold. Followed in by Guest. Here's Berwick. Although uh, it's Guest going taking the lead. Berwick, I think, is struggling. Guest and Berwick. Berwick coming home the stronger. I think he's going to get up. Yes, Lee Berwick. Oh, he's gone through easily in the finish. Berwick first. I think Billing on the far side has kicked again to run second. Just in front of uh, of Stuber, Stephen Arnold, who led them until the last 50 metres before Gatter being in by Berwick. Then followed Perry, the back marker, Armstrong and... Uh, the other runner there was, uh, was, was Arnold, but it was a great performance by Lee Berwick in the blue jacket of eight and a half metres to easily, in the final analysis, to take out the, the Asanda Bernie gift for 1983. for Bernie Gift receiving their last minute instructions from the starter, Mr. Grenville Bell Chambers, who's done a magnificent job today in starting all the heats and semi finals so magnificently. The back marker, of course, is John DeCoit from Victoria, a back mark of two and three quarter metres. Next to him is Gerald, Gerald Toomey from New South Wales in the white jacket of five and a quarter metres. A very strong fancy is Alan Scott from Victoria in the blue, six and a half metres. The favourite, the very short price favourite, Stuart Guest from Bernie here in yellow, eight and a quarter metres. From Launceston, Wayne Johncock in the green, who's run the fastest time in the heats and semi-finals at this stage. He's off eight and three quarter metres. And Gary Westcombe, a former Bernie Gift winner, the upmarker in the pink, off nine and a quarter metres. And any one of these six finalists are in there with a chance. And of course, all interest will centre in the performance of John DeCoit, the backmarker from two and three quarter metres, and the long odds-on favourite Stuart Guest in the yellow. Set. Start. Weston got away well, but John Cox trying to win very quickly. Then we go back to Guest, followed in by Scott, Toomey and DeCoit. John Cox in front. Guest is coming. And Weston's won the Bernie Gift. A great performance. Gary Weston's won the Bernie Gift. Stuart Guest, mate. Then follows uh, the other runner there in uh, Toomey. But there's no doubt in my mind that Gary Weston has taken out the Bernie Gift of 1984.
Racing Webster and Proudlock again brilliantly. John Cock on the far side to open up a two metre break. Webster's flying home. Davis starting to pick up momentum. It's John Cock in front with 30 metres to go. The Tasmanian's too good. John Cock streaks away to win the Bernie Gift. John Cock first. Gregorio second. Webster might have got up to run third. It's very close. Davis is there. Further back in the field was Proudlock and Cheney, but the Tasmanian Wayne John Cock has won the 1985 Asanda Bernie Gift. Australia's top professional athletes gathered at Bernie's West Park Oval yesterday to compete in the time-honoured Bernie Gift. As the runners went to their blocks for the final, no one in the 10,000-strong crowd could imagine the controversy which was to follow. A set for the 86 gift. And they're off. Bat began brilliantly on the far side. Bakes began well. Coming through strongly is Hipworth in the blue. Hipworth taking the lead. Dine and Webster coming home strongly. It's Bat and Hipworth. Hipworth in front. Bat is starting to go home strongly. I think Bat's won it. Bat and Hipworth hit the line locked together. The judging machine gave the verdict to Darren Bat in the green, defeating Hipworth in blue. But the judges were of a different opinion, believing the Victorian had won. The Neil King stable rushed to their runner Hipworth, performing a professional celebration dance. Meanwhile, a confident Bat waited for the decision. When the result was announced, Bat and his trainer asked to see the machine results, but were refused. For obvious reasons, the official margin from the machine was not made public. The decision drew jeers and boos from the large crowd close to the finish. Second place Bat was not impressed by the result. I thought Mark Hipworth got me to me about uh, 30 or 40 to go. But uh, in my opinion, I kicked back over the last 10 or 20 and I got up and won. The machine showed Bat the winner. The judges picked Hipworth. I say Bat. What do you say? The final of the gift was a top class affair with the former world's professional sprint champion Jim Thompson and Miles Murphy, the world's junior 400 metres champion, both making the final. On their marks. Stage was set for a nail-biting 1988 Asanda Bernie Gift. On their marks and set. And away. Grimer on the far side began brilliantly. McConnell and Evans away fast with Dynan. Thompson in the right starting to pick them up. Dynan, I don't think, can win. Grimer holding on at the halfway mark. He's still a metre in front. Trying to go with him is Evans. Dynan flying, but Grimer's won it. Grimer's held them off to score in the Bernie Gift of 88. Grimer first, close for second and third. Evans and Dynan. Thompson close up. the four fastest semi-finalists as the six runners settled on their blocks in quest of the $15,000 Bernie Gift. Set and away. Gaffney exploded away in the centre. Diddy began fast. Briggs coming through with Bakes. Now Commodore and Mailer warming to the task. Briggs has taken the lead at the halfway mark. Gaffney trying to go with him and Mailer, but it's Johnny Riggs. Johnny Riggs takes out the Bernie Gift of 89. Commodore flew for second. Mailer was third. Australia's greatest runners, Shane Naylor and Dean Capabianco, settling back on scratch. Ballard in the blue, O'Dwyer the yellow, Collins in the green, and Potter in the pink. The 1991 Advocate Bernie Gift, they're set and away. Naylor exploded from the blocks in the red. Beginning quickly was Potter, O'Dwyer, and Collins coming out after him with Ballard. Now Capabianco starting to fire up. Naylor can't go on. The stall gift winner, Capabianco, grabbed them, and he's made it a double. Dean Capabianco has come from scratch to win the Bernie Gift. A magnificent run. O'Dwyer second. Collins might have been third. Potter the West Australian second. recorded a scintillating 11.9 seconds to become the first athlete ever to win the Bernie Gift from scratch in its 104-year history. Eight scratchmen qualified. The final of the Bernie Gift provided one of the best finishes in the long history of the race, with local boy Tim Putter a strong favourite. On their marks, set. They're off. 
away. A good break on the outside. Putter got away well. So did Hearn. Further back to Vandenberg. Then Ireland and Brimgren and Nala coming hard down the outside at the 75 metre mark. And it's Potter just in front. Here comes Ireland and Brimgren. They're both finishing very, very strongly through the tape. And I think maybe Ireland may have just got up to defeat either Br uh, Brimgren or Potter in a very, very close finish. Further back to Nala. Then follows Vandenberg and Hearn in the Bernie Gift of 1992. Although the track conditions were quite good despite the rain, Ireland's time of 11.7 seconds was extremely creditable. In 20 metre race attracted an impressive field boasting three of the nation's fastest 200 metres runners. But the strong mainland presence didn't deter Matt Stevenson, who ran the distance in 12.77 seconds ahead of Newcastle's Ross Smith and Sean Bailey. No, I've been training all year for that, since probably May, June, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's a lot of hard work playing. Eyes on a firm track greeted runners for the final of the gift, Victorian Glenn Crawford the back marker, but in the strong headwind he was unable to close the gap, Matt Stevenson in pink and Ross Smith in white hitting the line locked together. Stevenson mobbed by supporters when the judges declared him the winner. I've been training all year for that, since probably May, June. But, uh, yeah, it's a lot of hard work playing off. Craig Brown came into the gift final as the second fastest qualifier behind Western Australia's Sean Main, but the teenager proved he's a big time performer, overcoming a bad start and powering home with an impressive kick. The judges took a minute to call the close finish. When the yellow flag came up, Brown knew he was a winner. Oh, it feels good. I'm beside myself at the moment, so I just uh, lap it up. gift was thrown wide open when inform runner Sean Bailey was eliminated in the semi-finals. West Australian Darren Rogers producing a blinder to win from local hope Joel Deegan and Tim Potter. Oh, Tasmania's gone crazy the last few days and here we are and it's, it's all happened. The best thing in my life so far. Yeah. 
McManus and Rod Buchanan, becoming the first man in history to win the Latrobe and Bernie Gift in the same series. Just felt like I was hovering on the ground. It's an amazing feeling. I love it. On the running track, 22-year-old Luke Whitney of Seven Mile Beach produced a dream run to win the $15,000 men's gift from a class field, including national 200-metre champion Ambrose Azenwa. I'm proud of doing this, and this is it, I've done it. And, oh, I'm lost for words. After coasting through the heats and semis, Australia's fastest man was hot favourite to notch a second Bernie title to accompany his two stall gifts. And the New South Wales rocket didn't disappoint, surging past the field to win a thriller. An anxious wait as judges split he and Coswell, then jubilation for Ross. And he wins awesome. Nationals, a gift, gift winner, a whole... Two different feelings, but I hold them on the same level. Yeah. Definitely. Such a prestigious gift to come here to win, and you know. The winner paying tribute to the teenage runner up. Yeah, he kicked again. He kicked, and that was his 400 strength coming home. Yeah, he's, he's a great runner. All eyes were on the grass for the Bernie gift. And it was Adelaide powerhouse Duncan Tippins off 5.25 metres edging out Victorian Liam Shepherd and Wynyard's Ben England. The season sprinter now happy to call it quits. I've been 10 or 11 years trying to win a big race like this and to finally win a big race at the end of my career is just an awesome feeling. It's a dream come true, really, it's a dream come true. A great spectacle. It was South Australia's time to shine in the middle, with two co-eaters taking out both the men's and women's gifts. 21-year-old backmarker Clay Watkins, $11,000 richer after this performance. It will certainly come in handy, I imagine. Cars, new cars always, you can't, do, can't update enough, so it might be on the cards. Tasmania's golden run coming to an end thanks to the man in gold, Ollie Worm. The Victorian teenager already knows where his $11,000 cheque is going. Well, I've got to give my coach Vasily 20% uh, then. I might invest in the stock market, focus on my future. South Australian Robbie James winning in the men's gift by a whisker. I think it was yellow, I'm not sure his name, but... He gave me a scare. Like I could like see him in the corner of my eye coming. I'm like, oh no. I'm saying, nah, ecstatic. I wanted this. The men's gift equally as entertaining with officials turning to the third umpire to decide on a winner. The crowd, hoping hometown runner Eddie Gates, got through the gate first, but the fairy tale wasn't to be, with Olympic hopeful Brendan Cole given the nod after an agonising wait. He's done it! I saw the green out in front and I really didn't think it was mine, but uh, my coach just tells me he thinks that I was behind him, just before the line and just after the line, but somehow a different line. What would a 16-year-old do with $9,000? That's something St Virgil sprinter Jacob Despard is contemplating after his win in the men's final. It's a pretty strong field, the back markers, I can see him coming in and then just kicked and out kicked him. It's great. For the record, he does have plans for the money. Probably help mum out because she pays for my accommodation and like all the entries and everything. So I... Jumping to get underway with $9,000 up for grabs. Adam Coote watching on as fellow Victorian Maxim Mashenko had the book thrown at him. Copping a one-metre penalty, then it was back to business. 
Keith well clear. Keith wins easily. He was a while. He takes second. 31-year-old Coote dedicating the biggest win of his career to coach and 1986 winner Mark Hopworth. Hasn't had a male, a, a male gift winner since he's been coaching, I don't believe, so over the 120, so yeah, just happy to have, have done it for him. Really steady. Some thought there couldn't be a closer finish, but the gift final proved that wrong. 30-year-old Simon Fitzpatrick led from the start, shocking last year's winner Jacob Despard. The difference, one hundredth of a second. My coach lost to Jacob two years ago. So I spoke to him, he's back in Melbourne, and I spoke to him about the final, and he said, you just make sure you beat him this time for me. Jack Hale. A tight race continued across the 120 metre track with John Howe coming out with the win with the time of 12.63, followed closely by Hale with 12.69. Uh, I go for broke. The start's the best bit of my race, so any ground I can make up in that first 50 is where I win, so I just managed to hold on from those fast finishing guys. Off to a fantastic start was the green Dan Lamoto as he quickly goes up to our early leader Daniel Reeves. Coming at him is Jordan England in the yellow. England in the yellow goes to the front. Jordan England hit in the front. Joel B flying home, but it's going to be Jordan England. Jordan England wins the gift. It means the world to not just me, but the guys that I train with, my family, my coach. I mean, I've been running for eight years, and since day dots, it's the race that you want to win, so it means everything. Reeves away well in the pink as Lugo in the green will try to get to him early. Brandon Clark, the, the long jump champion, trying to make up the ground. Here he comes from the back of the field, Eddie Gates. Eddie Gates goes up to challenge Reeves. Eddie Gates and Reeves hit the line. Reeves has won it! Daniel Reeves from the front mark has taken out the Bernie gift. In the women's event, last year's runner-up, Smithton's Tamika Johnson went one better. The race favourite spurred on by the memory of her last appearance at West Park. <laughs> it haunted me every day since last year, so I wasn't going to do the same thing this time. That's what I thought at the start. I'm not coming second again. gift, Cameroon runner Anne-Marie Maury McCann held off fast finishing 17 year old Morgan Wiley to claim an emotional victory. All this woman, she's fast woman, but I'm very confident because I'm finished third in Brescheville inside Australia. I'm just in positive. The women's race was packed with Tasmanian talent and all had a good chance of winning the title. Melissa Kay making an uncharacteristic false start, costing her a metre. The delay didn't affect Smithton's Madeline Pope, the 15-year-old edging out Devonport's Morgan Wiley and Kay to become the youngest women's gift winner in history. And the women's gift was another thrilling contest. New South Wales sprinter Megan Hines claiming victory from Fiona Fagan and Madeline Pope. Got out at the start and I just had to keep chasing the front runners and I just, I think it was Fiona in the pink, I just kept chasing her. I thought, oh, I just can't get her, I just can't get her and then I just kept going and I finally got her at the end. And hometown hero Melissa Kay won the Bernie gift. The veteran overjoyed to claim a second title. I'm getting older now, so it's good to win one for the oldies, I say. More belated success in the women's gift, with Bernie 29-year-old Olivia Mills getting home 
ahead of informed Tasmanians Danielle Taylor and Morgan Wiley. Over my 10 year career I've probably been in every big final but I've never come through with a good. And um, my coach Milton Saltmarsh has worked a lot with my mind and my body and just put the two together so it's all good. While 22-year-old Alicia Wrench Duty was too strong in the women's, collecting a $3,600 purse. You know, it's really good to come into state and see what other girls are doing. You get used to people in your own state. It's really good to know I must be in some real form and running really well. The women's gifts couldn't have been any closer, with another hometown hero taking the honours. Sandy Loring in green, millimetres ahead of Laura Nicholson and Danielle Taylor. It's actually the best feeling. Uh, it's like a dream come true, it's like a fairy tale. In the running events, Somerset's Morgan Gaffney taking out the gift comfortably. It certainly didn't plan it that way. Oh, anything can happen on race day. I'm, I didn't wake up this morning thinking, oh, I'm going to be the Bernie gift winner tonight. So. The feature events full of drama. The field for the women's gift called back after a false start. Commonwealth Games representative Melissa Breen clearly unimpressed. The eventual race winner making the most of a second start. I didn't get a good start in the first one, so I was kind of glad they called us back. Running in 2010 sprint winner local girl Morgan Gaffney pushed into a headwind. In blue, she held off Devonport winner Melissa Breen to blow them away. Improved odds in the women's gift final with five of Tasmania's best sprinters making up the field, but they were upstaged by a runner without a trainer. Victorian Cara Boosted surprised to get her first gift win. I was not expecting that at all, so, oh my goodness, <laughs> stoked, I've never run that fast in my life, I don't think. <laughs> Kimberly Gillen tried to win the women's gift three times. It all came together in this year's final where she led start to finish, winning in 14.5 seconds. After Latrobe, I didn't think I had a chance. I ran terribly, but I put it all together today. Lily Castle backing up her win in Devonport as the Hobart-based runner cruised over the finish line, coming in ahead of Kate Walter and Angela Phillips with a time of 14.44. I was stoked. I was on such a high from Devonport. I was feeling really, really, really strong coming into this. I was so stoked. <laughs> A oh, great start from Allen in the green as she goes up to Kovacic on their outside. Kiara Chambers working hard in the middle of the track and here comes Morgan Gaffney in the blue. It's still Allen in front. Gaffney challenging and here comes Maddie Coach from the back of the field. Kiani Allen's going to win it in a streak. She does it easily in the end. Kiani Allen close for second and third between the back marker Maddie Coates.